And we are back. Uh, of course, if you tune into the show on a regular basis, you know what we're about to dive into. But if, if this is your first time, if you are popping your proverbial testosterone cherry, we welcome you. And we're about to get in deep with the fantasy football prognostication. Jeff, give the people at home a, a little bit of an idea of what they can expect here over the next 40 to 45 minutes. Well, essentially, we're going to break down all of the matchups that are happening around the NFL. There are several teams on by this week. It is week seven in the NFL uh, and in your fantasy football league, so you're going to want to pay close attention. We're going to break it down based on what teams are going to do when they have the football in their uh, specific matchup. So you're going to want to uh, watch to see uh, what kind of what we're thinking about these games individually. So... Yeah, to total league domination is really the goal here. And, and not only do we do the show, this is our fifth year of doing the show. Uh, the junkies out there have responded. The response has been overwhelming. But we also have a website, too, mm -hmm. TestosteroneSports.com. And we do this thing called the Fat Chat. And Jeff. just in time to perfectly again. Amazing, it's man. wonderful, man. So, so having, tell, tell, the, tell the people at home about the Fat Chat. Well, every time the show airs, so when this taping is done or there, this show is done for you, go online. You can come on even a little early, around 10 o'clock at night on Saturday. Here, come online and you can come to the Fat Chat on our website where we have a strategy session for all of your lineup questions. Coaching is so important in fantasy football. Absolutely. You hate to leave points on your bench, especially in your, when you're locked in a, a tight one against your buddy. And, and so you want to get the coaching down right. So we all kind of work together uh, on lineup questions. And then also trading season in full effect right now. So any kind of trade ideas that you may have, you want to throw them out there to see if you're getting proper value for your players. Look, you don't want to go trading Maurice Jones-Drew for Eddie Royal. Right. You know, and w one of the junkies did that. So we're here for you guys. Come out, ask us what uh, our uh, advice is or our opinions are about your players and what you can do to get yourself ready for your playoff push. Do that on the Fat Chat. It's our way to interact with you guys. It's all about building relationships for right. us. We, we always wanted to do this show with our friends and and uh, we want those guys to be you guys. So work with us, help us help you by coming on to TestosteroneSports.com coming into the fat chat and saying what's up. New Orleans traveling to Carolina to face a division foe, the first matchup that we break down of the week. Now, Carolina has been flying high for a majority of the season, had a, a deflating loss last week, Jeff, against the Bucks. They came out flat. They only scored three points. They really never got it going uh, in the run game mm -hmm. or in the pass game. But here they're at home against the Saints D that can be exploited from time to time. And we know the Saints are going to be going on offense. So when I look at this game, I think we could be about to see some fireworks here in a divisional matchup. Well, and you hope so because Carolina, like you said, they came out totally flat at Tampa Bay a divisional game where they needed to win uh, the division is wide open there in the NFC South so you know that they're gonna want to perform well here coming off that loss now they're at home they face another division rival the Saints are there I'm pimping the Bush jersey because I love what the Saints do in their special teams I think Sean Payton is a mastermind at offense and I think that Reggie Bush could get loose in this game in a big way yeah I, I tend to agree with you Jeff I mean Reggie Bush is one of those boom bust type players you want to keep him in your uh, in your lineup this weekend for sure. He he seems like uh, he seems like he could have an, a, a nice outing here. I mean, let's not forget that Warwick Dunn was fairly effective last week against Carolina's defense. So although Carolina's D is not uh, is not a bad unit, you can definitely keep him in play. But one guy you've got to keep in your lineup here is Drew Brees. Jeff, this guy's the number one quarterback mm -hmm. right now in fantasy with Tony Romo dinged. He's a must play every week. Yeah, and not only that, he put up another 300 yards last weekend, and he's doing it with not really any good targets. It's, it's amazing. He's got Reggie Bush out of the backfield having a great season through the air. But after that, there's no Marcus Colston still and Jeremy Shockey on the shelf. Now, word is that they're starting to get a little bit more healthy. Colston, rumored to come back, did not play last week. Kills he's, me. He's going to keep coming back as the weeks go on. Shockey might play in this game, but don't expect very much production out of their playmaking tight end. Yeah, I agree, Jeff. I think if Shockey does play, you would be foolish to start him because Agreed. you don't know uh, how many plays he's going to play. And he's always been one of those guys who uh, has a tendency to get dinged and then, you know, just kind of peter out. So, But on the flip side, on Carolina's side of things, I think that the Panthers are going to get it going here. New Orleans has been susceptible through the air. I mean, the Vikings did damage against right. them through the air. So I think this is a week that Jake DeLome is very startable for fantasy owners. 
and Steve Smith owners have been patiently waiting for a week Steve Smith would explode. I'm wondering if that explosion might be about to come here, Jeff. I think Steve Smith could go off for two touchdowns. Well, he's a very highly talented playmaker. He had a, about 90 yards in last week's contest, and when your team puts up only three points, you're, you're kind of pleased to see that decent output. You know, this is a team that's supposedly very pride-filled, so I'm surprised that they didn't come uh, and show up for the divisional game against Tampa Bay. Here again, I think that if they are, their pride's in check. They've got to rally together and, and see what they can produce offensively. It starts with the ground game, in my opinion. I'm surprised that Jonathan Stewart or D'Angelo didn't do much in last week's game. They have to get things going if they want to compete here against a New Orleans team who's winning without a lot of positivity. Tennessee brings their run-heavy offense to Arrowhead Stadium this week where the Chiefs are number 32 in the league against the rush, allowing 182 yards on the ground per game. Lindale White a little dinged through the bye week but should play in this game. And Chris Johnson, Jeff, I think the Rook could be off the hook. Yeah, he's going to get it going. I really love Chris Johnson. To me, he's got some of the biggest play potential of the rookie class, and he's dynamite when he's got the ball on the edge uh, with room to make a move. Uh, Lindell still dealing with a little bit of the shoulder. They've been winning. They like him to move the pile, but his carries are continue uh, to be restricted, I think, and Chris Johnson right. should pick up the load, starting with all confidence. Yeah, now Tennessee is also a very stout defense team right. uh, as well. Their defensive unit just uh, really shutting teams down. They're number four in the league in total defense, and they're the best team in the league at points allowed per game. They're allowing a paltry 11.2 uh, points per contest. Now the Chiefs this week have no Larry Johnson. We don't know exactly why at this time, but he got into some sort of a domestic altercation, has assault charges pending against him. The Chiefs with no Johnson and a disgruntled Tony Gonzalez who did not get traded Ooh, seems like a recipe of disaster here for KC, if it, you ask it's me. It's going to be tough. Jamal Charles will likely get the start for the Chiefs. Don't expect a whole lot. The Tennessee Titans are awesome at stopping the run. They're also the, a top five passing defense, so you can't expect Kansas City to get much going through the air here either. And it's really kind of tough to say who's going to be under center for the Chiefs. Is it going to be Damon Heward? Is it going to be Brody Croyle? For fantasy purposes, I say stay away. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, it's pretty bad situation developing here, and you've got some uh, inmates kind of trying to run the asylum here with Tony Gonzalez speaking out, very uh, verbally lashing out at, at uh, Carl Peterson, the owner of the club, really just uh, kind of berating his owner and, and saying essentially, why didn't you trade me? So Jamal Charles sees an opportunity here. I had a chance to visit with that kid in the preseason when we went out to Chiefs camp. I just think it's a tough spot for a rookie oh, to definitely. go against. Uh, uh, such a stout D as Tennessee. Seattle going to go down to Florida and face off with the Bucks. Now Tampa is the only defensive club in the NFL, Jeff, to not allow a rushing touchdown. They're very stout against the run. Their, their defense playing at a fairly high level across the board. And, and despite, despite what you think about Tampa, they just continue to win, man. John Gruden's a hellified coach. Yeah, they, especially in games where you don't expect them to. They, right. they come every time and John Gruden, like we mentioned about Lubby Smith earlier in the show, he always gets the most out of his players. Absolutely. And they've got some old wide receivers who have gotten hurt while the young guys are kind of stepping up and the older veterans who are on the team stepping up and doing a great job for their unit. Uh, it's nice for them. They come off a big victory. Uh, they're at home. They play much better at home. They face Seattle. I know Tampa Bay hasn't allowed a rushing touchdown yet, but... Has the Seahawks even got a rushing touchdown for their offense? Well, Se Seahawks were, had some explosive run games earlier in the year. I, I told fantasy owners, I believe it was week two and week three, two weeks in a row where I advised you to, to roll with Julius mm -hmm. Jones. Great dividends in those games. Here, Julius Jones, a complete non-factor. He's a boom-bust kind of guy. This is a bust week for them. Matt Hasselbeck probably on the bench. I, looking at this game, Jeff, I think the Seahawks could score somewhere between 3 to 10 points. I don't like them at all. You can't play any of their players here. Yeah, I'm not real high on them either. And if on Tampa, side, Tampa Bay side of the ball, uh, for fantasy purposes, this team doesn't yield a whole lot of production uh, for your team. So you got to kind of watch out. Uh, they're boom and bust. Uh, either you get 15 fantasy points out of Antonio Bryant or 1.5, right. uh, which is really tough to roll with consistently. Seattle plays a pretty good defense, and as far as the running game goes, you never can quite tell which back is going to find room to move. So right. I say stay away if you can. Uh, I don't think that they're consistent enough to invest in too heavily right now. It's really tough for Ernest Graham owners because when the guy gets the ball, he is effective, mm -hmm. but he hasn't been getting the ball on a regular basis, and last week, 
I believe he had five or six carries and work done had over 20. And the reason that that happened is because their starting fullback, BJ, I believe it's BJ Askew, went out mm -hmm. in the game. Then their backup fullback got injured. So they moved Ernest Graham to fullback. So with, with uh, the fullback questions there right now, Ernest Graham being used in a different way than he has typically been used, this is a bad omen for him. I'm not saying you can start work done here. I would, I would really shy away. Joey Galloway probably not going to play in this matchup. I think this game is ugly. Fantasy owners, beware. Yes, and Matt Hasselbeck unlikely to play in this contest. It's uh, unclear right now who will get the start last week. It was Charlie Fry. He's not very good. Seneca Wallace. He's not very good either, nope. so it's going to be a nightmare situation, and it, it's too bad for Seattle fans. Mike Holmgren kind of screwing the team over right before he retires. Now the Jets are going to travel to Oakland to square off with the Raiders. The Raiders are a run-first team, Jeff, and they're running up against the number three-ranked run D in the league. The Jets allowing just 69 yards per game on the ground. I think this could be some tough sledding here for the Raiders. What do you think, Jets? Oakland. Well, McFadden finally feeling uh, more like 100%, and I do think that the Raiders will get things going on the ground. They are a run-first offense, and, and that's just what they're going to focus on. Jamarcus, not that good through the air yet. He's still developing. I like his abilities as an athlete, uh, but right now it's taking him time to process mentally. Uh, and, you know, and so I think they're going to run the ball a lot, and I like them to get things going, but you can't tell in this matchup which back. Is it going to be Fargus or McFadden? Here again, you, you might have to roll with one or the other. Tough to say which one to go with. Now, Brett Favre fans, you were elated back before the bye week. He comes out huge game. Last week really coming back to earth. So it's kind of tough to read the tea leaves as far as Brett Favre is concerned. It seems like so far in his Jets career, he's lacked that consistency where he's thrown for 240, 250, and a pair of touchdowns every week. I, although I do think that's about what he gets in this contest, Jeff. I, I like him to hook up with Jericho Cotri once and probably to somebody else once. We mm -hmm. saw Thomas Jones get it done last week, three touchdowns. I know you're a Jones guy. Is Jones going to do that again? I definitely think so. He got into the end zone twice last week. Uh, three kind of, times, twice well, on the run and yes, once in the pass. Right, but on the ground specifically, that's kind of what we're talking about. Jones uh, moves the ball uh, between the tackles fairly well, and I really like what they've got going on with Tony Richardson, who opens the holes for him. Richardson, one of my favorite players in the NFL right now. He's a pack your lunch and come with your hard hat on. We're going to knock heads and move the ball the hard way. Good old-fashioned hard-nosed football, and I think that continues here. Oakland, decent at stopping the run, not great, and the Jets are going to roll with the run. Detroit and Houston, probably two of the worst teams in the league. Not, neither of these squads are going to be any fun to watch. And if you've got the Sunday ticket, I almost guarantee you, you won't even click onto this game because really, I mean, there's just not a lot here to look at. I don't know, Jesse. I kind of like what Houston's got going on right now. They've, they've got a little bit of positivity. They won. They came back from behind last week against the Dolphins, who are beating a lot of good teams right now. They, they got it done at home. It was Matt Schaub's best performance of the season. He's starting to find a rhythm. He's got Andre Johnson, who's Finally. got a good chemistry going with there. And I do like Steve Slayton. He's a nondescript back who mixes uh, some good running abilities and also catching the ball out of the backfield. I think you can play a lot of the Houston players in this contest because we know Detroit has no good defensive ability whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, you definitely bring up Andre Johnson. He, I think he's a must-start for fantasy owners. Slayton? Had those couple big games early, and last week you look at his stat line, it's, it's pretty ordinary. Mm -hmm. So although the Lions aren't exploitable, D, he is startable. I think the best running back in this game is going to be Kevin Smith. And I'll tell you why, for the Lions, because he ran well last week against us. One good run. And, and, yeah, had a good run against the Vikes, which are a formidable run, D. But Houston has allowed a league-high 10 rushing touchdowns. Mm -hmm. So they're allowing two rushing touchdowns per game. I think Kevin Smith is a better play here than Steve Slayton. Teams are starting to figure out Steve Slayton. He caught on fire early. Steve Slayton's very undersized. I don't like him in this game, honestly. You're crazy, man. We'll you're see. crazy, you, man. You just nailed I like him. You, man. You're, the, you're crazy. You just put the nail in his you're coffin crazy, by doing man. That. I'll tell you what, dude. Steve Slayton is definitely going to have a better game. They're at home, and this is the Lions defense we're talking about. You know, they played above their heads against us. They smell blood in the water. We couldn't do much offensively. We were just a little bit bland in our approach the Texans at home aren't going to do that they'll set up the run with the pass if they have to well we'll see that's why we watch the show that's why they play You're the games. crazy man that's why they play the games we're going to take a brief break right now we'll be back with more matchups right after this testosterone sports